Hello, this is Josh, and welcome to another video episode in this series on Moolab, a digital audio workstation and sequencing software. In this video, uh, I'd like to take a look at some of the audio features inside Moolab. You can do audio recording. It's very simple. Go over here and add an audio track by hitting the plus button, add audio track. You could add an audio file. Just simply click here in this blank window and it will open a browser where you can navigate to maybe a, a audio file that you recorded on an external source or a different computer or an, in a different program and load it into your session or by just creating uh, an audio track and clicking OK you'll see that it creates a rack that corresponds to that track you need to be aware of when recording on either side of the record button you have a note which by default is highlighted in red and you can see if you hover over it, that's the record events button, which is MIDI events. I'll uncheck that just by clicking on it. On the opposite side of the record button, you have record audio. That's where you have to engage to record on an audio track. As long as it's red, that's the type of data that you're going to be recording. So these are hybrid tracks. You could record audio or MIDI events on these tracks. This is where you select which type of data that you're going to be recording. Now if you right click, it will bring up the audio recording properties or the setup for your recording. This is where you can choose your input source, where it's going to be monitored from. So in this case, if I wanted to monitor my audio from in, uh, in the headphones, I choose rack 3. And then I could put my effects on there, uh, compressor, EQs, uh, reverbs, whatever I want my singer or myself, whoever is recording, to be able to hear. Maybe you want to use an amp sim simulator. You can put that on there and monitor it while you record. You can choose whether it's mono or stereo. You can choose whether it auto normalizes or not. You can also add uh, audio recorders, which is adding another source. So if you have a multi-channel audio interface, this is how you would set those up. And from the record from area, you would choose the next available input on your audio device. And each of these can have a different place that it's monitored from. You can also remove these just by hitting the X over here on the side. Now hitting this setup button will bring you to the modular routing environment where you can add additional inputs by right clicking and adding a module and you can add all kinds of interesting things in here so that it could modulate the audio from the incoming signal before it gets to the rack you could add uh, audio processing effects before it gets to the rack or after it or uh, split the audio into two separate signals and do all kinds of interesting creative things from this modular environment it's extremely powerful for now, I'm going to close it. You also see here a countdown, and it says four by default. That'll be four beats, where it will go one, two, three, four, and you'll hear the default sound of the metronome before it starts recording. I find that very helpful, and I leave it at four. So that's how you set up your audio recording in Moolab. Now, the way that I use it more often is samples. I have collected samples over the years and have uh, a library of my own that I have manicured and uh, continue adding to. Maybe that's more where you're at and you want to use something uh, where you can load up your own samples like the old sample, sample players, uh, kick drums, bass drums, uh, bass sounds, maybe that you've gotten from old vinyl or the internet or sample CDs. How do you add your own samples? Well, it's really, really easy. But there's a couple of ways that you can do it. I think the easiest way is to go to your file browser, navigate to wherever those samples are located, and just simply drag and drop them. Now, if you go over here in the browser, there are audio files and there are samples. And they both have waveforms that look a little different. 
there's also multi samples. So you got to actually load in your own multi samples. Say you've recorded eight different positions of a snare drum. You could you could uh, pull these in at different velocities and create an incredibly dynamic multi sample drum kit or piano or all kinds of things. I'm going to the basic samples folder and you see here there's just one sample in here. It's the sticks. That's the sample that is already in every session by default. It's the sound of the metronome. In this sample bank, um, I'm going to drag in my own sample. I can preview it in Finder. That's the one I want and I can just drag and drop it right in. Now this has been added to my session but it's not on any track or rack yet. It's just available to me. Now I could um, create a new rack, pull in a under instruments, devices, uh, new sampler, which is the basic sample player. And from the samples bank, I can just drag and drop it right into this audio data area. And now we have a kick drum. We can double click the waveform to open it up in the audio lab where we could do any kind of trimming. If our sample wasn't quite at the very beginning, if we want to trim some of the tail, you can do that right from here. You also have all of these controls, tack, decay, uh, release, pitch, fine tuning, volume, pan, uh, velocity sensitivity, all of this stuff is available to you as well as three slots for effects processing within this sample player. Of course you can also use all of these in the rack, send it to other racks for additional processing, and the list goes on. There's also another way that you can do it. You could just simply drag the kick sample over to the arrange window over here and drop it in and it will ask you do you want a pitched sample or a sliced sample if it's a single transient like a kick drum choose pitched sample what sliced sample is going to do is try to find multiple transients like if you had a loop it will insert uh, markers slice markers into the file and try to play it back in the time of your in the in the tempo of your current project. Just to show you what this is like, I'll choose sliced samples. And you can see here, it created this long thing here. And if I hold it down, it begins to loop back on itself and has this kind of reverse sound. What it's done is it's created a track, it's created a rack with the multi sampler and it looks a little different. There are far more capabilities of this sampler, like multiple layers. Um, you can have uh, a different note on each key, which is a great way of creating uh, very dynamic drum kits like I mentioned before. So you could have maybe three or four different kicks and they're all being triggered by different velocity sensitivities. Uh, same with snares, all kinds of other stuff. And you could continue adding samples right in here. Isn't that cool? And you can take them out, or you can double click. And again, you see the waveform. This is the note zone uh, editor, and double click and it'll bring it up into the audio lab. You can add and remove those uh, sample layers. But if you just want a steady kick drum, or a steady snare, or any sound, choose the pitched option. So I'll bring it in again and choose pitched sample. You see here, it's just inserted one note on the on C3, it's the default uh, pitch for that sample, and it's just used the Moose Sampler, which is the basic sampler, which I think is great for this type of application just trying to get a kick drum in and program it uh, program in your pattern I can just double click on the MIDI clip and go ahead and create a quick pattern like so turn my loop on and I've got a kick loop easy as that with my own samples 
You can also do the same thing just by dragging your sample. Let's find a different one here. Dragging your sample from the finder and again right into the range window. And you see here you get a couple of, uh, you get an additional option. You can do a streamed file, pitched sample, or slice sample. Pitched sample and slice sample, again, will create a rack with a sample player, the sample uh, device, with that sample loaded into it. A streamed file will be like recording an audio file. I'll choose that and you can see this is a waveform. It's not MIDI. And it's right on my timeline. So that's the difference in some of the audio importing of your own samples into Moolab. Now what about exporting or bouncing down MIDI parts to audio files? You can do that in Moolab as well. I'll select this part here, go to session, and choose mix down audio. If I have something selected, it's going to ask me only mix down selected parts. And if that's what I want to do, I'll click yes. If I want to mix down everything, I'll click no. I just want this, this little kick loop that I created, so I'm going to click yes. And it's going to ask me here, do I want an audio file or do I want a new sample? If I click new sample, the dialog looks a little bit different. I can give it a sample name, say kick loop 01. And when I click OK, you see it adds it over here to my samples. Let's do it again. I'll select that session, mix down audio, yes on the selected parts, and choose audio file. Now this is where you would want to go if you wanted to mix down the entire song or export something so that you could use in another application. If you click in here, you can choose the folder or desktop or wherever you want to save this audio file. Choose new file and give it a name. Click OK, and then it's going to ask me for my uh, audio quality. You can choose 32 bits if you would like. It's going to ask me from what position to what pos position. And by default, it's going to choose where my loop uh, markers are. So it's taking from measure 1, beat 1, to measure 2, beat 1. That will be those four kick drums in a loop. I could also check here, create new part using results, and watch what that does. It's created an audio part here from that MIDI data. So I can mute my original and it plays back just the same, only in audio. I'll go to my desktop and you also see it has created an AIFF file that I could use in another application. And that's how you would bounce down MIDI parts into audio, create loops, or create entire mix downs by exporting your sessions into audio files. And that's just a few of the ways that I use the audio features and functions inside Moolab, and I hope that helps you with your own projects. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.